Tech Rabbit here. So now we'll take the um, Windows 11 Nightmare motherboard and um, roll the uh, components on it and um, power it up and um, see if we get a picture at least. So anyway, I moved the camera a bit for better visibility. Now I got the, the strap. I wonder what hand I'll put it on. Find a grounding point. <laughs> oh. yeah, come here. There. Plugged into a ground reference. And then um, I printed out the relevant pages from the instruction manual. I haven't actually done this generation Intel system for a while. So so I actually did a bit of a bit of spying. It should be like that. Take the CPU. Just try and be careful with it. is always stressful. Oh, that should pop off. Looks okay. So, I still was debating with myself if I would use this um, um, SSD drive or not. Oh wow, it's 480 gigs. See this, I never really looked at it. Before. Oops, I did it. Had to open it. Never have enough tools. So, let's see. use this. I didn't, didn't actually remember it had that high capacity. So it should theoretically just come in there and then press down. Well that's a nice latch mechanism. I don't understand why the M.2 drives, I mean with, with this stupid screw you need to use on all the new M.2 drives. So I, I really don't understand why. This, this look, you see it just snapped on and then you pull that back to release it. Yeah. Oh, it's in. And I thought I'd put this in before we actually have a look at the cooler, which is just a, a random cooler. It's got its own back plate. Not even 
going to work. Yeah, look at that. Oh, it seems to. I it was such a long time ago that I actually bought this. The this cord. I don't even remember that I had it. Oh, there you can see that. Oh, that's great. And um, comes with some kind of thermal paste. I think I will actually. Should we give Windows 11 a chance and actually put some better? Well, at least some non brand thermal paste on it. Well, let's figure out which way around. Oh, the wire's very long, so. What's the CPU fan? System fan. CPU fan is down there. Ah, basically, I think the wire is long enough to come from wherever. Maybe we'll take it from like there. So I have to go dig up some some real thermal paste. I found. Ha! Totally unused. I thought I had some thermal paste. Can't remember what project it was for. Don't remember. Ah, okay, you can um, open up a very specific area for, and then you can apply it with the applicator. What else have we got here? A socket 370 and... Four two three socket. Uh, it's not useful for this. I think I'll use the good and tried method of not too much and not too little. Wow, that was that was close. And of course, I don't have any paper here. You always need some paper when you're dealing with. Thermal green. Okay, I have to get some. Soup. Um, got some paper just in case. Just put a. Whoa! That came out too easily. That is actually, in my opinion, too much. Maybe we will. Yep. 
that'll do. Not too much, not too little. And I think that will spread well. And then we have to, <laughs> have to remember that the fan is interesting enough, it's actually by design. Um, like that. They want us to tighten it down so that it actually meets that. It's got a lot of spring on it. Of course, this didn't come with that much instructions. I mean, it has got a This one is not as much as those other ones. No, oh, I think I'm going to leave it like that because that is seems to be very tight. It's actually, a, it's, it's, it looks like a pretty good heat. I mean, it's not very big, but um, you know, for Windows 11, you know, it'll be good enough. Why give Windows 11 luxury products? The whole idea with this build is to make Windows 11 suffer. CPU fan. 
with speed control, so that, that should be okay. So we have the um, solder drive installed. And now it will be for some memory. And here we have these DDR3. Windows open. Windows, okay, this is that kind of socket. And since um, I have the full channel complement, I don't really need to actually care which slots in where. And actually, I tell you the truth, I kind of like the uh, DDR3 um, socket system where you have both. Uh, holders on both sides. Um, lots of the um, DDR4 systems they only have this disconnect on one side and then you're supposed to like put the RAM sock circuit in or well, the module in a, in a kind of an angle and then you should be able to like push it down unequally. Ah it's just why it isn't like in more than one system where I'll actually come back and say oh but the RAM isn't seated properly. But you see with DDR3, then it's like you, you see the they go in and then. Oh. So, so far. So bad. Oh, now it's really heavy. <laughs> Let's do a check on the other soils. So, like that, I suppose. And then, um, yeah, I already dug up the. Um, didn't seem we really needed the, the stuff that I printed out. Seems to theoretically be going quite well. So I'll just put this in place. And that is. I won't power plug the power supply in yet, I'll just make sure the power cord is plugged in. Uh, This system needs um, CPU power from a four pin connector. And usually what, well, you can see how I've separated it. Usually, yeah, they're together like that. And it's actually hard to see that they're together. And then you, you were, you're, you're like installing an older system and you, need, you only need the four power, um, four pin uh, 12 volt. And then you're wondering, oh, doesn't it have it? Because you, you'll see it like this together and you don't recognize the splits. <laughs> Can be a bit confusing. Um, okay. Is there a risk of plugging? Just down so one looks into the or the other one. Does it actually say something? Six point two PCIe four. Four plus four CPU. Yeah. If you would have a more modern system, like a thread fully equipped, kitted out thread ripper, or like I don't know, 9000 series Intel stuff, Xeons, but uh, we don't have that. We only have the, the luxury of dealing with 
older equipment. Right, should plug in there. And this is only just to um, test and see if we um, get any lights. If we don't get any lights, then that'll be a quick ending of this build. Actually, not sure. If, yeah, okay. I, I, fan, yes. The motherboard, yeah, quite likely to work. Eighty percent. Memory has worked before, so kind of 90% chance. Um, the SSD, never tried it, it's brand new, or was brand new when I bought it, like quite a while ago. Power supply guaranteed to work. <laughs> it says, says me. I, mean, I, I, I do think Corsairs are quite a good brand. Oh, uh, always been able to trust them. I, I haven't run up, run on up to a Corsair power supply in my own, in my own experience that has not worked. But of course, it can always happen. So then I have to fiddle with the monitor, which I actually have here on the side. I will have to probably reorganize a bit to Yeah, and then I need to figure out the power um, pins so I can actually show up the correct pins. Yep. Wow, it works. Now we can go home. <laughs> That's the self-test or something, screensaver. Um, yeah, so we're pretty much ready to try and boot this thing. Uh, the only problem, the, and it should have uh, graphics in the CPU, so we should get some a, a HDMI output, but we'll see. So let's not panic if um, things don't start up right away. And this is a suspect monitor also not guaranteed to work. The power supply is now on, it's plugged in. Should be. So at least something. No. Wow, I was like, what? <laughs> okay, you have a lot of memory. Uh, you have to. Rem okay, this has no operating system, of course, but this is good. You know, that's pretty much good enough for for this phase, I would think. But, um, yeah, when you put, uh, I think this is 32 gigs of DDR3, and the memory check takes a while. So, yeah, it was no concern for panic. I mean, I'm really not going to configure anything right now. Um, my objective for this video was that we would install everything on the motherboard and do a bench test of the motherboard just to see that it kind of works. I would just like to get into the BIOS just once. Just to see that we can be kind of indicated if it actually works. Five or Oh, that was too fast. So <laughs> running it several times. It's it's F9 you know, on this. Uh, okay, so wait, that looks like a mouse driven interface. Uh, actually, don't think you need the mouse. Mouse. Plug that into. So. Oh, 
look mouse interface. I mean, this is an old BIOS. So. Whoa! Okay, that was to. Oh, sorry, that was just for. Um, I think it said something about device information. Oh, that looks better. F12. And uh, this has a UEFI dual BIOS. Actually, I think this motherboard is better than what I remember. Maybe it's too good for Windows 11. Maybe we have to think of downgrading. Because I think this is actually turning out to be a rather more advanced motherboard than I remembered it was. Even if it's a bit dated. 3.8 megahertz. Gigahertz. Hmm. Total memory size. 16 megawatts. What does that mean? So okay, so those are four gig modules. Pity I thought I had um eight gig. Seems to be both are populated at least. Oh, so maybe they're just four gig sticks. Yep. So what else to do here? Uh, yeah. Anyway, if you found this video useful, consider pressing the like. Um, could consider subscribing also. Uh, and uh, merch is available. Or if you'd just like to buy me a cup of coffee, you know, I'll put the links in the comments. And, um, I'll see you in the next one, because the next one is that we're going to take this package and um, put it in its case. This part of it. Yep. So I'll see you in the next one.